السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. How are you doing, guys? الحمد لله. الحمد لله. Tonight, I would like to speak about red flags and signs that when you see it in your future scar. And also, we'll talk about some red flags for those who are married in a little bit, maybe at the end. But I want to start and focus more about those who are in in relationships and um, they are considered this person to be a future uh, spouse. If for you as an individual or for you as parents, when it comes to your children as well, or friends or somebody asking you. So these are some things that I think you should take it very serious. And hopefully we can have a beneficial conversation tonight about this important topic. Because as we all know, it is so important to um, ensure that the next generation among our community have a stable life. And not to be married to someone that they just can live with, but they can be married to someone that they can't live without. Somebody that they're so attached to. Somebody that they love so much and they really build a strong relationship and a strong family. A strong family means a strong community. Strong community means a strong ummah. Strong ummah means a strong, great future for Islam and for uh, Muslims, inshallah ta'ala, and for the country at large as well. So um, I know some of the things that I'm going to share with you, and I want to start with this point. And in my opinion, this is one of the most important points of my talk tonight. That so many of what I'm going to tell you, you might know already, something that you are familiar with. Many people see these signs, they see these red flags clear in front of them, but they ignore it. And they just don't want to be serious about it. And I think one of the reasons for many people to do that is just because they are so deeply in love with the person. And that usually, especially before marriage and before any halal way of building this relationship, it means that there is so much haram already invested in the relationships. They've been, I, they call it halal dates, and I don't call it halal date. I call it Muslim dating style, because it's not halal in most of the case. So they go out alone. There is an excessive type of conversations. There is so much love, you know, uh, uh, khalwa, touching, maybe kissing, hugging, you know, uh, so much attachment between him and her. So what happened when you have that strong attachment to the person, you develop something that's called he or she, the only one. And halas, for, your, uh, for yourself, that's the only one out there in the world for me. You know what? He is the only one, she is the only one. Absolutely true when you get married. He is the only one, she's the only one. But before you get married, it's so dangerous to have this mindset. You know, because what, what, what this mindset do to you, it block you from seeing anything else. And people, when they are so emotionally driv driven, you cannot come as parents, for example, you cannot come to start to make logic to them or to speak to them logically because he is already blind. He doesn't think with his brain, think with his heart, with her, with her heart. So you cannot make any sound logic to them anymore. They are more emotionally driven. So you have to touch their heart. You have to recognize their feeling. You have to bring them to their common sense, you know, step by step. So it's not a, a logical thing as much as an emotional thing. But that's for case for when you deal with someone in your family or your friends who are so into this, even though he or she see this red flag. But for you yourself, for those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not put them in that level yet, in that test yet, if you are of a relationship, please make sure that you keep it halal. Because when you cross the line and you start doing haram things in the relationship, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punish you. And one of the punishment is that you don't see the these red flags anymore. And you keep continuing in this relationship in the wrong way. And, you know, one sister, she reached to that level, they already like, even, a'udhu billah, sometimes they fall into zina and like, he knows everything about me. He saw everything of me. I saw everything. Of, I know everything about him. I can't even think that I can cut the relationship. 
So what the sh what your brain start playing a trick on you and will tell you, oh, you know what? That's not a big deal. This person will this. This person will change, you know? And that's the second point that I want to make sure that you understand clearly. This concept of he will change, she will change, you know, it's a very also wrong way of approaching this issue. Parents, please stop telling your kids because you're so excited about this candidate for your daughter or you're so excited about this girl for your son. And your son type, but mom, she doesn't wear hijab. Oh, she will change. You know, oh, but he doesn't pray. He, he will change. You know, that going into the relationship with the assumption, oh, but he's like this and that, he will change, she will change. I have bad news for you. You know, people don't really change. The reality is people don't really change. Very few people change, especially when it comes to the character of the person. People adjust a little bit. And in the end of the day, when you marry to the one person, it became a game of, you know, balancing your options. Is it a better to stay with this problem in the person? I gain more of this relationship? Or, but if you are out the relationship, why would you go into it? You don't have to make that choice. You're still out. So this idea of they will change, people adjust, especially when it comes to character. You know when people change? When they know and they realize 100% that this is something wrong and they've been working on themselves so hard to change themselves. And while they are changing, while they are changing, it will take time, lapse, while they are in this process. You have to be very patient with that person as they go through that change. And my advice for someone who's not into the relationship, wait until the persons clean themselves up and real change happen in their life. And when this happens, yes, I can look into the option. And I'm talking specifically about character traits. And something that so it became a habit, part of the DNA of the person. Okay? Somebody came to me and said, Sheikh, I love this person so much, but he is addicted to drugs. You know, my, I think I'm the source of a strength for this person. You know, I help this person. Habibi, you... Yeah, you are going to be his wife, not his therapist, not his addiction therapist. If he's addicted to drugs, you need an addiction therapist. He doesn't need a wife. You know, I think I can help him. Yeah, you're not his shrink, okay? You are going to be his spouse. There's a big difference between these two. This person, all these red flags, but you know what? I feel so bad for the person. Yeah, that's not why you marry someone, because you feel bad about them. Give them money if they are poor, you know, you know, let someone from their gender give them a hug, you know, but it doesn't mean you, you feel bad for someone because I marry that person with all these red flags I see. So one thing, oh, they will change. And again, go back to the assumptions of they will change that this is not, it doesn't really happen a lot. Okay. And there is adjustment happen. Some things. You know, even I, I would be honest, I always want to like talk about marriage to give even personal, you know, good and bad and ugly of my life. You know, and I, I, I think when he became a sheikh and he became a public figure, nothing anymore private. Or most, most of your life became public. You know, in my life, I still have certain things I grew up doing. I, I was raised in certain ways. You know, my family are so... Fed up, were like angry, always at me. He said, Walid, you always yell. But I was raised yelling as raising voice. It doesn't mean like you're mad or like that's a bad manners. But it's just a different culture. Okay? It's just a different culture. But you know what? I try, I fail, I try, I fail. I but I'm very committed from inside to make sure that I don't raise my voice. Even though I wasn't raised that raising voice, it means something bad. It means I'm serious about it. But in American culture, no, it's not. It's, it, it's not a good way of educating or talking to kids or talking to children or even talking or expressing your concern. So it's a struggle. It's not an easy, you know, for years and decades, the person working himself. But 
that's not the biggest red flag that makes my wife divorce me, you know, but I'll just give you an example of how certain things like this part of who you are became so hard for you to get for years work on it, even though from inside you feel the need for that change. Anyway, so what are the red flags that I think it is so important for you to immediately when you see it to hit the brake and to reevaluate? I think one of the biggest red flags when it has to do with the religion, and I want to break this down to many points, red flags related to religion. Number one, when someone who is basically um, have, and I'm talking about, I'm not talking about somebody who's not from your same religion. That's, that's a different conversation. I'm talking about someone who's Muslim like you. But someone with a with the with the aqidah or a belief that is against what you believe in. Like you marry someone, okay, who is not on your belief. Um, um Faisal, a sister that I know, she married a guy even though she so she knew that this person is Shia from the Shia. But she's Sunni. She's a convert to Islam. She converted to be a Muslim Sunni. She said I was in a situation, I need money, I need to pay my rent. I couldn't find anyone except this neighbor of mine who was nice enough to pay my rent several times. And the fourth time he said, that will be your mahar. Consider it all the previous payments. I agree. I told him, but you're Shia, I'm Sunni. He said, no. She said, I know the red flag, but I didn't listen to it. I didn't pay. He's like secular. He's thus in America, risen, lived most of his life in America. He's from overseas. He doesn't care about Shiism. He said, I don't care about Shiism. After the first kid, going back to his country, guess what? Mom and dad starting saying to our kids, Ya Ali, Ya Hussein, you know, all these kind of Shi things start embedded to our kid. So many people marry a Christian woman or someone who was like Christian, and all of a sudden, after a while, you never go to church. But now, since you are going to the masjid, I want to take my kids to the church. So things change after a while. And that became something she has to deal with and get divorced and have a kid when she was young age. Divorce, she couldn't take it anymore because she see things that is kufur, shirk, and bid'ah that she cannot take. Another person told me about his story. His wife, she was prescribed to some extreme kid of Sufi groups. And he's not this kind of person. So when you see someone like that, it actually caused a lot of damage in the relationships later. Someone who follows certain shiuch and aqidah and, and, and believes and, and, you know, some kind of mother, that's a red flag and that's a big red flag because your spouse will impact you. Al-Imam Razak Sanani, rahimahullah, he's the sheikh of Imam Ahmed. When he went to Yemen, the Yemeni people want to hold him in Yemen. He's not from Yemen. But the people of Sana'a want to hold him in Yemen. So what they did, they married him a woman from Sana'a, from Yemen. But she was a Shia. He asked his sheikh, his sheikh said, don't marry her. He, yeah, he's a student of knowledge. He thinks that he's Yemeni, Sunni, and stuff like that. He married her. Guess what? When you read the biography of Abdul Razak today, they said, what kind of he is He was influenced by Shiaism. Rahimahullah. She influenced him. So one of the red flags that I consider big red flags when it comes to the religion, when you see someone who is very different. Also, not necessarily that, that, that believe or prescribe to a certain sect or group, also groups. Like, for example, I dealt with a case when someone married uh, a sister and she ended up like a pro-ISIS. And she told him, my mom is to go live in Syria. Guess where he's living right now? He's doing 18 years in jail. You know? So, exactly. <laughs> there he's living right now. But you know what? That's a red flag. Someone like, hey, I prescribed to this sack. Or like, I'm like one of these, you know, somebody like prescribed to some like ideologies or something is that is not from the Sunnah, not from the Quran and Sunnah. That's also something that a big red flag. 
another one. Somebody who do not prescribe to anything, but have no respect for the religion. Anyone who have no respect, even if this person not, because I don't expect everybody listening to my talk has to be a religious person. My talk is very general. Even if you're not a religious person, even if that person, he or she not religious, but they have respect for their religion. But don't ever be married to someone who have no respect for religion. Because in the end of the day, we as Muslim, religion play a role in our life. You don't want to be married, if it's today or later, how much you committed to, this, to the religion is another question. But I think more important to me that you make sure you don't ever marry someone who have no respect for the religion. So if you see, pray, you see praying or fasting, he makes fun of you or have no respect for allowing you to spend money or time and learning your religion. You know, have no respect for your teachers, for the Quran that you learned. Someone like that you don't want to have as a husband or a wife. Somebody respect religion, value religion. So anyone who should disrespect the religion is something for me to consider a big red flag to be, you know what, hold on. Yes, people might change later on when it comes to how much they committed to the religion. Yeah, yeah, I don't know much. I learned about all of us grow religiously. We married or we're not very practicing Muslims and now we grow together. That's understandable. But someone who have no respect for the religion at all, consider this a backward stuff, that's a red flag. Make me, you know what, stop. I'm not going to get into this relationship. Another sign for the religion which is so important is a salat. That's a big red flag. Somebody miss salat as if it's nothing. MashaAllah, I pray three times a day. <laughs> you know, I'm very religious. I pray like three times a day. What are these three times? Yeah, I need one in the night and one in the... When I wake up and one during the daytime. What's that? Or two times when I wake up and before I go to sleep. What's in between? I, I just join them all in the night. That's... Okay, I understand that one time in your life, maybe you must Allah and you have to combine between all them, you, something happened, but that's the regular base and means nothing to you. That's that's the red red flag. Waqt al-salat. Salat means nothing. Nas, yani one of the things that I always advise to people to ask, ask the conversation, what time, just kida uh, what time is Salat al-Maghrib? Oh, Salat al-Maghrib, it is uh, 5.30, that's right. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, sorry, my mistake. No clue what Maghrib prayer is, what Fajr prayer is, what Dhuhr prayer is, uh, time is. That's, that's red flag. And unfortunately, unfortunately, and I, 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 I said this will, with, with, you know, with regret that uh, sometimes you see among sisters, missing Salah is more common. And the reason for this because there's a certain time in the month when they don't pray. So if she stayed 10, 15 days not praying, and she stopped praying again, you know, it's just, it became, I, I kind of been not praying for two weeks. It became hard to pick up again. And I think this is, that, that I understand the struggle, I understand this test, but this is, and sh if it shows a commitment to the salah after that, it just shows the quality of your deen, the quality of your Islam, and how much you committed you are to the religion. So really, something I respect a lot in, in our sisters, would they commit to the title of Salah? But somebody doesn't care about the Salah, doesn't care about praying. You know, missing Juma is something normal for him or her or him because her, she's not obligated for Salah al-Juma. Like, another red flag, in my opinion, it's also a, a, a big, big no, which is somebody who does not show respect. And respect to you and to your family. For me, that's a red flag. And I will say it again. For you and your family, even if your family are silly, you know what, I can talk about my dad and mom, but my spouse don't talk bad about my dad and my mom. That's called, because respecting my father and my mother is part of respecting me. I might disagree, I think your dad is, is, is not reasonable. I think your mom is over jealous. I think they are, you know, but showing disrespect 
and being very disrespectful, that just translates that to, because I, out of respecting you, I respect the thing that important to you and value to you. So anyone who doesn't show respect to you, can anyone tell me how people don't show respect to you? Let's engage you a little bit. Like what? When I say he must, a red flag when somebody doesn't show respect to you. Like what? Raising their voice over you. You know, pretty good. Always cutting you off. Never really respect your, you, you give you a chance to talk. What else? Very good point. What else showing disrespect to you? Not never listen to you. Okay. No respect for your choices, what you love, what you like. You know? Okay, what else? So arrogant, like you nothing to him. You know? Who are you? You, you just a woman. You just, uh, you know, you disrespect to even not to you, to the whole gender. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and somebody, for example, oh, you, you're, you just, uh, you have a diploma. I have a PhD. Who are you? You know, how much you make? You know, did you go to college? It's just so disrespectful for you. He doesn't have respect for who you are. Okay, that's also showing this. What else? Like something like can be real. Yeah, somebody would never admit to you his mistakes. That's arrogant. Yeah. Makes fun of the person, always being sarcastic, always make fun of you, always trying to put you down. By the way, why this is so important? Because anyone from the beginning tried to put you down, tried to destroy you mentally, emotionally, breaking your basically self-esteem, it's going to get worse. And what get worse to be what? Abuse. That's what you call domestic abuse. One of the things bullying, bullier, or bullying happen and domestic abuse happen is when person, how to control someone. You're only able to control someone if you destroy that person. If you have them very low self-esteem, if you make them not worth something for themselves, they basically bend their back so they can ride over your back. And that's how he controls. And guess what? If you ever get into a relationship and later on this person became abused, and by the way, that's men be in men a lot, but some women like that too. They just abuse husband. They control them. They make them basically in their grip. And unfortunately, some parents, they said, yani the advice they give it to you, make him like a ring to you. That means she's not a piece of metal or he's not a piece of metal. You know, uh, that's not how, uh, please don't cross in front of the camera. Oh, you just did it again. Good, no problem, good. Um, um, so this is something important because in future can be very destroying your, your relationship. And unfortunately, when you're married to someone who have this problem, okay, disrespecting, and I will associate with this is basically a controlling behavior. Somebody so controlling, unbelievable level of control. He can justify, she can justify that with jealousy, whatever they want. I care for you. I love you. That's not, that's not love. That's not jealous. That's called controlling freak, he or she, you know? And that basically lead to what? To abuse and bully. And if you, if you fall into the grip of someone like that, it's very hard to get out. I'm, I'm like, I know a sister married a guy for about eight years. Okay? This is a real story. She said, Sheikh, I have red tapes in my apartment. I said, what do you mean? I thought she talking about red tapes like... Uh, um, intangible, like kind of red tapes, like, you know, rules. He's, she said, no, 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 an actual red tape. I said, what do you mean? She said, you see the window? 
that is like four feet away from the window or three feet away, he have a red tape. I'm not allowed to cross that tape. I'm not allowed to come closer to the window or to the patio. Red tape, almost he is the one who allowed me to cross. I what? I didn't, she said, I saw all these signs. I saw how controlling he is, but I never thought it would reach that level. And I was the one who divorced her from him. And he was so angry at me. He actually threatened my life. Yeah. So it is really scary. Had nothing to do with religion. Controlling this is a character trait. And that's why it is so beautiful how the Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ تَرْضَوْنَ دِينَهُ وَخُلُقَهُ He did not say you only please with his deen, but also khuluq, manner, character trait. Because you might be a religious person, but you're a monster. You might be a good Muslim, but you're stingy. You might be a good you person who pray and do a lot of good things, but you know what? You are terrible communicator. You know, so there's so many other things beside the religion. That, that's why the Prophet put these two together. The character trait of the person. You have to look at it. You know, I know also another uh, uh, sister, just the controlling behavior issue. Yeah. Uh, for example, not allowed to have phone, not allowed to have, there's a, a brother. Uh, and these examples, not from people like, people like born in, in the West. This guy born, raised in, in, in England, you know, and uh, lived in America. His wife not allowed to eat with him. She wait until he finishes his food. I don't know about people in modern day. I said, and, and what I, I asked myself, what would make person live like that? She said, Sheikh, and he admitted in front of me. He said, yes. When I sit in the couch, to sit on the floor. Yes. And I said to him, why? He said, to show respect. When he married her, she was arrogant. I want to break her spirit. You know what the question that, I don't, I don't want to scare you, but I want to tell you that this is serious. I'm tired of dealing with cases like this. And these are not random cases. These are, yes, it's not like I get cases like this every day. But there are large in number enough to tell you that this is a problem that does exist. And it can manifest itself in many different ways. Maybe I give you the most extreme stories I, I saw. But it is, I ask myself, what would lead a sister or a brother to be in a situation like this? A brother was suffering with a, 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 his wife controlling behavior. She controls it so much. Where are you going? Who are you? Where are you? You know, I need to know where it's your de uh, destination. You know what? I need to see a location in your phone. Why are you talking to this person? You know, a camera everywhere. That's not, that's not love. That's a controlling problem you have. This, and the problem, I ask all these people. They said, we saw this sign before marriage. He said, Chef, we you know what is my breaking point one time? I was in the Walmart. And he said, the girl and the cashier, she said, okay, this is your chain. And I reached my hand. She was next to me. And she just gave me the, the money. Oh, my God. She came and she slapped her hand on my bed. And the coins and the money were all over the place. Now, come and kiss him to take his number. She said, excuse me. Yeah, I know all this and all this looks. And, and you, why would you flirt with it? I said, I'm not. I'm taking the money. Flirt or what? Next time you don't ever talk to a girl. You... Yes, ma'am. But he said, I went home, shit. And you called me. 
And he said, Sheikh, I'm done. I can't live like that. But it took him two years to be done. It took him two years to... I guess he's well done <laughs> by that time. He's done, you know? I'm at La, but inside, you know, there is a saying in Arabic, The worst of matters is what makes you laugh. Not laugh because it's a laughable matter. It's because it's so sad. Sometimes when things are so painful, you just smile and laugh. But again, these are ignored from the beginning. Also, one of the things that it is a red flag to me, when people always make fun of others, nothing satisfied him. Believe me, if this person, he would never be satisfied with you later on. Always make fun of others. Everything is not good. Everything is doomed. When person said, all people are doomed, he is the most doomed one. And it was said, not the Prophet said that, but one of the companions said that. So somebody always praise himself, he's perfect, Mr. Perfect, Mr. Right. You know? My wife's middle name, I thought my wife's last name is right, but I didn't know that her first name also. His or first name is always. It became always right. You know? It it doesn't like work that way. When somebody you see these red flags, hit the brake. This can lead to problem later on. Somebody who always arrogant, nothing pleases him. Everybody is bad, everybody is less, everybody's not good. Always make fun of others, always put others down. Believe me, it's gonna be very hard for this person to sink with that person and even if he shows that he pleased with you today very soon will start treating you the same way he's treating others now he just fascinated about you he's you know excited about the relationship the moment the people get in together live together a couple of weeks months and after that things goes back to what it really the real you comes they have a say. They say in the engagement, people show you the best. And later they show you the rest. Okay? That's very true. I think I believe in that. And I think that's not a bad thing. But when the rest is so different from the best, that's the problem. I don't expect everybody to be in the same first two years. should be growing. But people in you need going up and down, but should not be a very big, huge gap, but the rest is completely ugly life. That's something that we don't want. Also, one of the red flags is lying. When you catch the person's lying, you cannot build marriage, any relationship based on principle. One of the biggest principles here to call trust. Trust is, is vital to relationships. Trust is like blood pressure. You know, you don't feel it, but if it's abused, it's fatal, it can kill you. Trust, if it's been trusting is basically one thing that damage trust is lying. How can I trust someone who keep lying to me? And I'm not talking about lying in major things. Like somebody now telling me about their spouse, they just find out that their spouse never graduated from college. They've been married to a, a person, have kids with, and I'm talking about people in your age. Not I'm talking about like, like young, the young, young brother. They just found out he never graduated from college. They just found out that he never really held a job at the university that he claimed that he works at. All these years was lying. He goes every day in the morning, she doesn't know. For two, three years. He never had a job. Actually, when they, because of the divorce and stuff like that, so they look into the university to, this, this person never worked for us. He doesn't even graduate from that university. That's scary. Lying is, especially in big things like that. Lying about his background. Where are you from? What kind of job? What kind of finance situation that he's in? Also, one of the red 
sign and red flags, in my opinion. When you see hot temper, somebody violent, like somebody, there's a vi sign of violent, that this person can turn to violent, like hit things with anger, hit kids. That's just scary. Because that person can be abuser, bully, and, and fear can keep you in the situation for a very long time. A sister came to me. This sister in her 50s, okay? What, what age? 50. And her husband still beat her up. Yani, you think 50s halas, yani? She's a grandma. She's literally a grandma, but he still hit her. I sit there. How, why? Why? Why are you even in this relationship? What are you getting out of it? Khalas, you're in your 50s. All your kids are grown kids. That, that, the tense of hurting or stuff like that is not as used to be. She told me, actually, Sheikh, I got pregnant from my husband only one month after marriage. I was upstairs and I was pregnant with my child, my first child. He was so angry at me, he hit me and he pushed me and I rolled from the stairs. First month, yani honeymoon. And I said to myself, if I keep my baby, I'm staying in the marriage. What a dumb idea. And if I don't keep my baby, I'm getting out of the marriage. Is that how you define your marriage? By rolling over stairs? And what's going to happen to you next? Now, 35 years later, she's telling me what I do. Because fear. He's so abusive. He hates. She really doesn't feel safe. She said, I think he can kill me if I divorce him. She's staying in the mirror. So what I'm saying is, violence is something, a very big, a big fight. By the way, I also dealt with brothers beaten by their wives. Literally beat him up. And that's also not fun. She beats him up, hit him like bruises. One seal in this master. A guy came to me and I had a serious thought. He came to me for something else. He said, Jeff, my wife kicked me out of the house. I said, what do you do? He said, I was late like half an hour or an hour. And I've been late like a couple of days. She literally told him, you cannot come back home. Okay, what can I help you with? He said, can you talk to her to let me in? He said, I slept in a hotel before. I don't have money to sleep in the hotel. Just talk to her. Oh, no, okay, I'll talk to her. Kind of never had the kind of, you know, <laughs> position to be put on. So I talked to her on the phone. And she said, yes. I looked him this time only because of you. I get down, girl. <laughs> what, a, what, a, what a character. Listen, but what does he really do? And at the way he talked to her, I'm so sorry. I really was caught on work. I didn't. The way he talked, that's not love. That's not respecting his wife. That's somebody afraid of his wife. And she said, she beat me up. She's bigger than me and she really hits me, Michelle. And I, and I, I love her. Then I ask, I ask for him. I ask him, did you see sign? He said, yes. Oh, every time I see things like that, I can tell you, they have seen this sign before marriage. So that's when it comes to violence. I just want to balance it a little bit between also related to, I told you, it was unfounded jealousy. So jealousy comes from love, does not come from controlling, does not come from not trusting. If I'm jealous because I don't trust you, that's a bad jealousy. If I'm jealous of, about you because I control you, that's not a good jealousy. I'm jealous about you because I love you, I care for you, that's good jealousy. That enough, no. Even if the cause for jealousy is good, the outcome of jealousy has to be good. Two things when it comes to jealousy. What I mean by the outcome, yani how I behave, 
So I'm jealous about you. But if my jealous, motivated by love and care, but my jealous take me, put a red tape and tell you not to answer phone, not to out, that's not a good jealous. The outcome is wrong. I strip it from your freedom. If my jealous motivated by not trusting him or no self-esteem about yourself, like I, I hear a story, like one sister, one sister, she was walking in Disney store. You know the Disney store? You know, big Disney stores, they have Batman, you know, statue of Batman, big man. And he, Lloyd or Gary's woman, you like him, that's right. She says, what? Who? Batman. And he's dead serious. Let's get out of the store. That's just, that's not love. That's low soul steam. Go walk out. That's so steep. It it just you know one of the red flags for me. If the person is miser, stingy. That's a red flag. Stinginess is a very bad character trait. And I would say, consider me an old fashioned. Especially, especially in men. Why is it especially, especially in bad for everybody, but men especially? Because men are supposed to be the one who spend on the family. Take care of the finance. So the person is so stingy and is so tight. I think that's enough. A sister came to me and she said, what do you think, Sheikh? I have this relationship with this guy. She's divorced. She has three kids or four kids. So she went with her husband out to eat, or her fiance. Uh, maybe she was married to him at that time. You just get married. So they went to the restaurant. So when the, the bill came, the waiter said, one bill. He said, no, sp split the bill. I pay for me and for her, and she pay for her kid. And he's an engineer. He's not like a, a loser who has no job. He said, that's fine, that's right. His, their dad pay for their, uh, yeah, and he shall support, that's right. She said, yeah, yeah, that's fine. But if you have something like that, that's first, he doesn't have respect for your family. He's not willing to take you who you are. You know, if you didn't, it's not easy to marry a woman with kid. I hundred percent agree with that. It's a it's a big challenge, big responsibility. But if you're not up to it, don't go for it. There is people up to that, don't have a problem with that. And you make sure if you're gonna marry someone who is willing to marry you, he marry you the way you are in your family and in your situation. You know what? I'm a bra uh, you know, I take care of my mom. It's not easy to be marry someone who's taking care of his mom, sick mother. So you're willing to take it the way, this the package. That's how it is. You know, I'm taking care of my parents. You want to come and join the family? So you have to be honest with that. And that requires certain things. But also him being so stingy that even for a meal, for a dinner, not willing to pay for it. That's just a red flag. How do you expect this person tomorrow? to? And guess what? She came back to me in this room and she said to me, Four or five months later, she said, Sheikh, I'm done. I said, what, what broke it any for you? She said, four or five months I've been asking to pay for rent, pay for anything. Not a single dollar. Didn't pay for anything in her expenses. He lives in another state. And he said, I spent all my money traveling to you. I said, that's it. Even though I didn't have a lot of respect for her when she told me that this what made it like, you know, break it, the relationship. Because right there at the restaurant should be the end of the relationship. But you know what? I always give excuse to people. I don't know what's been going through. Sometimes it's very hard to get from one marriage or another, from one divorce to another. So people make hard choices. But believe me, it's much easier to deal with it now than to deal with it later. 
to say, you know what, I'm stopping the relationship. Another big red, red flags, addiction problems, okay, or uh, substance abuse. You know, somebody in drugs, and that includes marijuana. Because a lot of youth today, and unfortunately, I'm not talking about someone, you know, smoked it, uh, like a uh, joint once or like, uh, you know, it can has life or luck. Our life, like, you know, tried it, you know, like what what his name said. I did it, but I never inhaled it. Okay? <laughs> okay? So I'm not talking about someone in that. I'm talking about someone who take this and, and, uh, and every, by the way, somebody addicted to drugs, you said, I'm not addicted. But they use it in a, in a, in a, in a very often fashion. Substance abuse is a big red flag. you I have a question for you. If somebody said, I used to be substance abuse, I used to be alcoholic, I used to use drugs, but now I'm clean, what do you guys think? What would you do? Yes. What time you think is enough? You don't know. Like if the girls tell you, you know what, I like you, I think you like me, but you know what, I used to shoot some stuff and <laughs> huh? years I was like just two months ago I'm clean now alhamdulillah no so it has to be enough period of time you can ask professional people to help you to make that decision you know also I think that's also required from you to ask for tests for drug tests for people like change you know, and, and, and willing to deal with that challenge. Mm -hmm. Abdullah, what do you think? So Abdullah was saying, sometimes the conviction is so strong, somebody became Muslim, and maybe he used to use drugs before Islam, or she used to use drugs. Yes, now Islam is a very strong motivation, but still, drugs is drugs. Addiction is addiction. Even if you are the most righteous person today, you know what, when it comes to kick in, when you see it, when you smell it, when you feel it, when you're around it, alcohol, you know, you can have a relapse. In this case, what do you do? I'm not talking about you're married to this person. You're still outside. I think that the red flag make you hit the brake, think not twice, think a hundred times before you commit to the relationship. But Abdullah was saying one of the things is you have to make sure that this person also go through therapy and that therapy will help the person to, because him admitting or her admitting to go through that therapy and, you know, helping them to, it, it shows you that these persons are sincere and changing their behavior, which is, I think, a good point. But, uh, yes. Gaming addiction, very good. That's also a very good point. Is that a red flag when you're someone who is a gamer, nothing but a gamer? I think it's a big red flag too. And I can tell you one of the things, Shahmar, I dealt with so many cases also, especially among young today, that marriage fall apart because he is only sitting on the couch playing games all the time. I had a couple once came to me, and I didn't know that before. So I asked him, what do you do for a living? He said, I'm a gamer. I said, what do you mean? He said, yeah, I'm a gamer. I'm a very good at it. What game you play? They started mentioning all these games. I said, and how do you make your money? He said, by playing games. I make more, more than you. I said, I'm not a stander for making money. Imam is not a stander. But he said, no, no, no. I make more money than my wife. My wife has an engineering, chemical engineering degree. I said, wow. He said, yeah, I go to Las Vegas. I play, blah, blah, make money. Then the wife said, Sheikh, believe me, money is not the issue. But the marriage is falling apart. He's so addicted to games. He's so fast-based. I'll, I'll take your point this way. So fast paced, so get bored so quickly. You know what? Let's go outside. No, I'm playing games. Stay late in the night. 
it's always in the fall, always like playing games, always with people, with friends. He never had any quality time with his family. That lifestyle is really bad. I came to understand from this experience, it sucks to be married to a gamer. <laughs> it's not fun. Yes. Backbiting is that red flag. Person who do not control their tongue, backbite, gossip, stuff like that. That's a red, this shows a bad character trait. Okay. But that leads me to a good point that I, I think it's worth mentioning here, which is not all red flags are equal. So backbite, different than drug addiction, different than, you know, not praying or missing salat. Another red flag. Would you guys consider, uh, let's put this, first let me put the red flag. The red flag is very suspicious or very scary divorce stories or story. Like someone, it's a mystery why this person got divorced. Never talk about it. It is the very mysterious things. No clarity about it. Or scary, like it's so nasty divorce. Would you guys consider this a red flag? And why? Let's see what the sister think. Yes. I love accent. That's not being nosy. That's being smart. Dealing well. Well, I, I, I got divorced because I used to beat her up. Oh, thank you. Good to know. You know, you get to know that there's a child that he abused her children. That's going to be scary things. Okay. Very scary reasons. So I think you should know about what is but if somebody hiding it completely i don't want to talk about it i think that raises a flag and requires from you to investigate and i think it's absolutely in full your full right but let me follow up with another question would you ever ask the person's ex would you ever ask this person's ex huh you would okay so let me break it down to you. Why I think it's so risky to ask the ex? Because one, they might have a bias opinion. Okay. Number two, you know, number two, not everybody is honest and like objective and, you know, um, going to tell you, you know, things the way it is really. Two, one of the most dangerous things about asking the ex is this. They might plant something in your head, and for the rest of your life, you will always connect it to that. Oh, he never respected woman. Let's say, put that. Now, every conversation we have is going to be, oh, she's right. You have no respect for woman. Oh, every time, you know, oh, he loves his parents more than anything else. Oh, he's this too. So you always, even sometimes it's very innocent. He's not really trying to say that. But because that already, you have a pre-notion about the person and you start filtering his action through that point. That's why it is so risky to ask and to talk to the person's ex. But on the other hand, it is important to ask to know what happened. To get a, an opinion. And I think it is important to see what if this person lying? He tell you, oh, she used to beat me up. Or she said he was an abuser. And maybe she was the abuser. She was cheating on him. And now the guy wants to know. So you see, there is like Masla Hawana and Masla. What do you think, Shah Ammar? Somebody asks you a question like that. What would you do? You ask me. Okay. Yes. Oh, no, I'm asking the question. Okay. Can I get to this in a little bit? But so I don't lose the point that I'm talking. So 
what do you think? Now I have here reasons why to ask and reasons why not to ask. What do you think we should do? Come on, give me from your wisdom. Say it. What would you do? Would you ask? Okay. Two sides of the story. Or three. Like, would you ask, even though with these problems, that's, how can you minimize these problems? How can you reduce these problems? Yes. Huh? But what about these two points I mentioned them? Aren't you concerned about that? Yes, but what if it is true? Would you take that chance? Yeah. So that goes to her point. You should ask. Yeah, yeah, I ask him, but, but I'm talking about you asking the ex. No, like you ask that person's ex. Yeah, because I said two points of concern. Yes. Yes, Salam. That's one of my points. Get a third party. Not directly, so you directly not influence. Somebody wise. So he will not just record everything and tell you, but you will filter the information. Okay? Number two, if you happen to listen to the person, use common sense also. Not, don't ask about details, because details can hurt. Get the idea. You know? Okay, is the divorce as anything I should be concerned of? Just big picture to understand. So I am in favor, actually, you can ask the ex if there is only if there is a reason. If there is a flag, the person not honest, there is other things give you an indication that this person is, not every person got divorced, you have to ask and to check. But if there is a reason for me to further investigate, I feel that there is something suspicious here, something fishy. Does that make sense? So not every case I will ask. One thing also, when person has no haya, that's another red flag, no shame. No shame. You, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, al haya min al-Iman. It's part of Iman. And there is no Iman for those who have no shame. We then test the Hayfus al haya there's no shame, there's no Iman. And that's something that you should be, and unfortunately today, there's a lot of people who have no shame. And he's somebody, I, I know a brother, I used to, he used to be my Facebook feed on all of the days. Like, no shame. He posts his pictures, going to striptease clubs, goes in Las Vegas, you know, uh, stuff like that. No shame. That's, that, uh, yani, when someone like that, if he come to propose to my daughter or to my sisters or to my, you know, to somebody in the community, I will have this as a red flag. I'm not going to excite. Yes? I, I am telling you, he got you a very good husband. Nice. Um, okay, I, I think I will stop here, but um, Abdullah was mentioning there is an important differentiation between envy and jealousy. You know, uh, but that's not directly related to the red flags that we're talking about. And also there's another good point, which is, but it is important to make that distinguish between being jealous of someone and being and envying someone. Um, it, it, also, the issue of making sure to choose someone who represent you well in marriage. That's also another issue has to do with marriage can be discussed. But our focus only on finding out these red flags that when you see it, you know, 
you, you kind of alert. And I will end with one that I, I kept it for the last because of the importance of it, which is, well, before the last, also someone who is financially terrible, like never held a job, has is so much in debt, you know, has a financial disaster in his life. His or her. That's a red flag. You have to investigate it. Because that person tomorrow will be responsible for your kids, for your family, you know, making his priority correct and, and, and take care of children. I'm not saying forever. People can, as they mature, they, they get better in these areas. It's not as to do with not character trait. It's just a habit. They can maybe adjust. But it is something worth invest, investing time in. But one red flag, big red flag for me, if you want to tell you who you are, show me who your friends are. If he, red flags of all this person's friends are bad people, drug addict gangs, you know, people who know not religious at all, you know, people like big question mark about their character trait. If you hang out with people like that, you most likely like them. One of the thing and how to know who you are, I look at your friend. So that's very important to make and close friends. I'm not talking about people like friends on Facebook or friends on on like um, and um, and Instagram and stuff like that. No, I'll talk about like good close friends. Yeah, just one second. So this is another issue that you have to look at. And also somebody never ever kept a relationship with anyone. You have friends know. That means person have no social life. And that's a, lot, that's a red flag. I'm not saying it's X, no, but something make you hit the brake. Yes, I think you should ask for STD uh, uh, ta test, uh, especially if there is a reason for that. In many Muslim countries, by the way, today, they required a medical test and included that HIV and STD, STD uh, the basically sexual transmitted diseases. And I think even the person is, is a good person, you should, there's no shame to ask for a test. You know, I don't think you should take it an insult or anything like that. And one of the things that I would like to enforce an automated that no marriage contract done without medical a check. You know, I would like to reach to that level an automated. You know, and I think it is important, especially it's not with sexual disease only, because some of these things you can get it even if you're not sexually active outside. You can get it because of the bathroom, like hepatitis A and stuff like that, and doctor knows better than me. Some also genetic things like uh, um, some diabetes and stuff like that. All these things are, are, are things that are important for you to know. So one of the red flags, some scary health also issues about the person, especially if it's in transmitted diseases, you know, or mental health issues. I think that's a red flag to make you help the break. Somebody have a, a huge mental breakdown, you know, admitted to hospital several times. Somebody, always like somebody when Mary, a sister, he was telling me, she thinks that she possessed with a whole tribe of jinn. And you know what? Alhamdulillah, the first tribe got out, but the second tribe is still there. And she's trying to get rid of What? How did she know the tribe? How many person in that tribe? You know? Uh, and all these scary things show you there is a mental health issues with that person. You know, a uh, uh, person believe they're always in hasad and ain and stuff like that and, and weird things. You know, and, 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 and hallucinations and you know, people tell me sometimes, Sheikh, is it okay if I find myself talking to my cat? I said, yeah, it's okay as long as your cat doesn't talk to you back. You know, when your cat starts talking to you back, that's when you need to go to the doctor. You know, but talking to your cats, that's fine. That's normal. But when your cat, you think your cat talking to you? No, that's when you need to go visit a doctor. So when you have a mental health issues, that's a red flag. You know, for me. But uh, 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 yes, the brother back there, he was raising his hand first. Go ahead. For where? It, in India. Okay. In 19, uh, in 2019, 2019, 2018, the divorce rate in India was about 40%, 35%. Uh, that's from their national uh, survey. 
That's not true. That they have a very high suicide rate and they have a high divorce. Maybe not that high in rate, but, uh, but I give you another country which is very, very strong family tie, like Saudi Arabia. Very family structure. Yet, Saudi Arabia and Riyadh, they have every nine minutes a divorce case. 40% of divorce rate. So I, I think family have, can play a major role in, in keeping the marriage, can also play a, more, a role in breaking marriage. I agree. I appreciate the point. Family support can help a lot. I appreciate it. But I, I don't think the, the 1% is an accurate figure because if I remember, because I, I give a lectures about how this world socially, economically kind of break down. And I give this in Australia. And I think India has a high rate of suicide and a high rate of divorce, but I can, I might be mistaken. But 1%, that's very, very, very low. Uh, yeah, I, that will be interesting to, to get. Somebody in Google can check out that. Um, final point to let you guys go for Salah. These red flags that you see, you have to analyze them. They are levels, as I said. Don't put them in one category. Okay, number one. Number two, these red flags means what? Some of them, you know what, X. Completely, I'm out. Some of them, and most of them, I'll say more than 50% of them that mentioned today, it means I'm not going to rush to make a decision. I'm going to prolong the engagement period, the contract period. And I need to know this person more. I need to investigate more. I need to ask more before I make the decision. When you see these red flags, don't just follow your heart. No, make sure you take your brain with you. Thank you very much for being a great listeners. And inshallah ta'ala, uh, we will um, continue with other topics um, related to marriage and other than marriages. Uh, and uh, I do... I was originally going to talk about how to figure this red flag by having 10 conversations with your future spouse. Yeah, before the marriage, yeah, before your future spouse. I prepared to speak about 10 conversations you must talk to have before marriage. 10 conversations, 10 areas. But today is done. So one thing you can see this and look it at I have a course online called Fuck of Love, and you can take that, a whole entire module about, it's not only, okay, one of the area, for example, past, but I break it down. What kind of question to ask about the past? What kind of question to ask about future? What kind of question to ask about family, about career, about finance, about religion, about work, about kids? What kind of question that you should have? What kind of conversation that you should have about these topics? And I think that's one of my favorite topics and one of the most important because that will allow you to be able to know these flags because the more you talk about it, these things pops up and start coming uh, and more clear to you. But hopefully, inshallah, uh, if we didn't get a chance to talk about it here in the, in the masjid, you guys can go online and take the course, inshallah. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.